have power at the extension cord coming into the uh, um, <coughs> planer but I noticed a while ago that sometimes the brushes that are inside here get a little bit of stuff on them and they won't uh, the uh, motor won't start so obviously that's what's wrong with it this morning so, I unhook the power, and then I'll take those brushes apart and see what's what with those. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Try and zoom me in there. All I did was take the cap off of there. Okay, that's the cap. And then this is what the brush looks like. Now there's nothing wrong with the brush. The brush is good. However, somehow, why? Uh, somehow the um, sawdust gets in there, 
and when it gets in there, it uh, doesn't let the brush move back and forth, especially when you're working with um, pine. That sap, even though the pine wood is dried well below 10%, it still gives you a little bit of grief. So, it doesn't want to let the brush make contact to start. So we're going to see if this cleans this up, makes it start. Uh, that this I had this problem before. At first when it happened I thought that, that the machine burned up, but it wasn't that. And a lot of times people are in a big hurry to complain about something or you know want to take something back when it's a simple fix. See, the brush is the same on the other side. What happens is the brush um, is wearing slightly, and when you get sap in, in there, let me just see what you're looking at here. I'll show you the other side here. So anyway, uh, a lot of times what happens is you get sap in there. Sorry about that. And it'll stop the uh, brush from making good contact with the electrical parts of this thing. So, you know, it's not the end of the world and it's something that would happen. Of course, it would be better if we had brushless motors, I suppose. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of the difference or I know that I know the difference, but I'm not exactly sure whether that would be the thing to do or not, but Anyway, as long as when you put the spring back in there, you notice that it is springy and it, and it can move, chances are that that's good then to be able to put the cap back on and it'll, it'll probably work. I have a Milwaukee Drills, and Milwaukee Drills were famous for this same thing. Also, I don't know if you can see this. Let me just get you off here. Now you got to be very careful when you're screwing around with this thing because you do have a sharp blade to contend with. Okay, and right here is where the blade is. But behind there, if you look where I'm pointing with the screwdriver, that's... That's sap, and it's actually built up there pretty, pretty thick. So that stops the wood from coming out when you're cutting, and then it also causes, uh, you know, the uh, the, the, the uh, planer to heat up a little and little things. Uh, and it's not it's not a major deal. It's just you know something that happens. So. I'm going to try putting this cap back on here and then we'll uh, see how that works. You want to put the cover on because the blades are right there. Not so much that I'm worried about cutting myself, but I'm worried about something flying out of there because when you're running the planer normally, everything is being blown down, downward. So I don't wear glasses for that reason. I'm not saying you shouldn't, I just don't. But uh, the thing here is when the, with the cover off, stuff will blow up in the air so you don't know what's going to catch or not on there. So let me plug this in and we'll see if it works. Okay, so obviously what I said there is what was wrong this morning with that, and it's it's not uh, 
unusual for that to happen, especially when you're working with pine. So I need to change the battery on my camera, I see here, so I'm going to do that quick. But then I'm going to get back to planing. I know that these planing videos may not be real interesting because of the number of views that I get. But there is a technique to this, and if you want to have nice wood, you're going to have to learn sooner or later how to do it. Okay, so that battery ought to be good for a little while. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the leaf blower and I'm going to bring it out here and just blow this thing out a little bit better. See if I can't clean up. Uh, if you put some um, gas, a little bit of gasoline. Now, you don't want to put a lot on there, but a little bit of gas on a rag or something. You can wipe off the blade. The sap will come off the blade. Um, lacquer thinner works. Diesel fuel will even work. It might be safer to use diesel fuel. I'm not an expert. Or, let me put it like this. That's what I do. I'm not telling you to do that. Find out what to do and clean it the right way. So I'm going to clean that off quick before I start cutting. The other day when I cleaned up here with the leaf blower, I had already put the plastic bag over top of the planer. That's why I didn't... Um, that's why it's still dirty and I didn't get it cleaned. What you want to do is if you crank it up, from cranking the planer down all the time to that three quarters of an inch, you compress the wood that's inside there. And all that is something that needs to be taken care of. The other thing that you need to do, besides cleaning off where the um, the cutter is inside this cover, you can see that there's sap on the stainless steel mat here. Now it's stainless steel so that it doesn't hold things as badly as it might if it was something else. But uh, in my opinion, you want to keep that clean. So since we put a lot of pine through here the other day, we've gotten a, some build up here. So I'm going to get a, a rag and with some solvent on it and clean that off good. I'll get back to you. The other thing that I didn't mention is uh, denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol works real good, especially on your hands. Denatured alcohol will take uh, the uh, sap off your hand. Now you got to watch when you're rubbing in here, you got those blades in there, so you want to keep your hand down low. You can see how quick that takes that off. I'm going to wipe the blades off a little bit too. It's not just the blade 
looks like I bent that. It's not just the blade that I'm after, it's to clean off, it's also the roller itself. The good thing about alcohol is that it evaporates really quick. So if you leave it sit on there for a second or two, it'll uh, melt the um, sap. And then it makes it easier to wipe off. Again, you got to be really careful here. These blades are razor sharp. You can see how the sap builds up there. It feels almost like rubber. You want to try and get that all out of there. I'm going to grab the screwdriver again. The screwdriver is not exactly the best thing for this because it's kind of thick, but it does get it off. Got to be careful working with this thing because it's you got the rollers in such a way. I put them in such a way so that they're not exactly aiming down. Like right now, the rollers, the blade isn't down. Okay, so I can get in there a little bit better. Okay, that's not looking bad. This is a wrench that comes with this to tighten these bars down. I had read an article where a guy said that he bought a bought a planer, took it home, probably didn't read nothing about it, plugged it in, and apparently the bolts that hold the, the uh, blades down weren't tight. You know, to not check the um, blade on the planer for tightness is about as stupid as not ch checking a blade on a circular saw. I mean, would you really start a circular saw up if it had a blade in it from the factory without checking how tight it is? I know I wouldn't.
Even though this alcohol evaporates pretty fast, I found out that if you dump it on rather than wiping it on, it, it uh, softens the stuff up a lot quicker. You can see on this edge here, that's all sap there that needs to come off. It gets pretty hard. And it doesn't matter what kind of planer you have, whether it's Porter cable like this little one or any other kind. If you're working with uh, pine, you have to be able to clean the sap off of your tools. Thank God the sun's coming out. Or you're going to have trouble with the uh, cuttings flying out of them. What you want to do is make sure that it's dry in there before you, depending upon what you use. If you use diesel fuel to clean it, you're going to have to try and wipe it dry because diesel fuel don't evaporate that well. That's why I grabbed the alcohol while I was in there. Alcohol does evaporate pretty quickly. Just show you this yet. Um, see this threaded rod here? There's one on each side. What happens is, as you um, put the head up and down, you know, sawdust packs in here, and it'll actually get to the point where, like, let's say I was cutting two-inch stuff and I wanted to go to one inch, this thing would be packing in here pretty much up until like a two-inch thickness of it when you go to try and put a one inch board in then you can't get the head to come down all the way because it's packed so tight so that's why you want to blow some of that thing clean then now I had said the other day sometimes when you're working with pine that has knots in it sometimes a knot will drop down and you can always tell which knot that's going to be. It, uh, there's a difference between a red knot and a black knot. Now, what they're talking about here, even though the middle of this is red, you can see the outside edge here is black all the way around. That means that the wood did not knit together to the board. That means that if you hit that, you'll find it moving in there. Uh, there's another one right there. It's the same thing. Uh, the black knots are... The tree, the branch was live, but the tree grew around the bark part of it. It didn't grow and, uh, you know, knit to the live part of the knot. So you can see on both sides. And really, if you look, I don't know if you can see really close there, there's a kind of a gap. So what happens sometimes is if you're not careful, those knots will drop down and they'll catch on the lip of the... Um, uh, table and also what I was saying the other day about this thing being self-surviving is because this edge here you you have to have this within a sixteenth or an eighth of the board in order for it to plane it's gonna be a nice board when it's cut down
I was saying. See what I was saying about those knots? That pulled that one right out of there. Okay. Now this still is a good board for construction grade. Like if you wanted to use this to pack something out, um, you know, within the framework. So, and it's three quarters of an inch, so I'm just going to keep this. I didn't see where the knot went. I'm assuming it took a ride. I don't see it in there anywhere. Sometimes those are the things you have to watch out for too if a knot comes flying out of there. It's not so much that it's going to hit you in the head unless it hits something first, but um, it definitely could hit you in the side or whatever. So you just got to be careful with it. Now I know a lot of you guys listen and watch the videos, but you don't, or you watch the video, but you don't listen very well. So I had said this before, but then I get a question, and the reason I can say that is because of the questions I get. I answered the questions in the, in the video, but you don't see them. But anyway, you see how these sides here, I call these railroad tracks. See how the two sides all the way down the board, let's see what you're seeing. All the way down that board, we have the two sides are plain. Whoops. Now that means that those are flat to one another, okay? So that will give me a nice flat board on the opposite side. Now, as I work this down. Now if you look on this side, it's cupped this way. You can see it's cupped slightly and there's down the middle. And this is typical of what I was saying about how to work a cupped board. Down the middle there, you can see that um, it cut the middle, but didn't cut the ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to take up to a quarter of an inch off this board. Now I'm going to measure it and see what I got here. Right now I've got a little more than 7 eighths. So 15 sixteenths is what the thickness of this is. Now don't forget I already took some off of there. So the board is 15 sixteenths, okay? Not from the mill, it's from after starting to plane it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I plane that to end up with no cup. So because I have the tracks, the railroad tracks, on this side, this is the side it went down until this side is smooth all the way across. If you look at that board, you'll see how wide uh, the board is now. It's uh, got a little bit of wood here that hasn't been planed, so I'm going to go down there one more time. But I'm only going to take it down very little. I'm still just about 7 eighths, so I got plenty of wood yet to come up with a flat board. So I'm going to go down a 16th on this face again, just to see how it ends up. A 16th should do the job. I want it all the way across. If it misses it in a tiny spot here or there, not going to worry about too much of that. But the basic goal is to get a nice looking board and the cup is coming out of this without extra tension off of the planer. <laughs>
Okay, so if you look closely at that board, you can see that it's been planed all the way down except for one spot. And that one spot is right here. From here to here, about this wide, there's a spot there that hasn't been planed. Okay, so that means that's a little bit low in there. Why it's low could be a number of reasons. We're not going to concern ourselves with that for right now. But we also don't want to take so much wood that we can't get the other side flat. So, if worse comes to worse, I can live with this little bit of wood here not being plain. But I'd rather have it plain. But what I want to do is I want to get this side down to being plain, okay, all the way across. That's what's important to me at the moment. Okay, if you look at that board, you can see that it's not planed in the very middle, okay? It's also not three quarters of an inch yet, but it's not far from it. I'd say another sixteenth or so is all I'm going to get out of this board. So that means that that other side's probably going to end up keeping that little piece on there. So I'm going to go through here about a sixteenth and see if I can't get that middle cleaned up there. Okay, so if we look at that board, that board's planed all the way across except for two tiny little spots. One here and one here. Now, which do I want to do? Do I want to get the opposite side the best or this side? Because I don't know if a 30 second will take that off. In other words, a quarter of a crank. So let's look at this. The board basically is the same on both sides. Actually a little nicer on this side. So when I look at that, I say to myself, okay, this is the nicer side of the board. I'm going to take, I'm going to sacrifice whatever wood I have left on there and use the planer to take it off of that side and not worry about those two little marks on the opposite side. Because in reality, they could be sanded off. I've got about a sixteenth or less that I can take off of here and I think that'll clean that up then.
Okay, so I'm at three quarters of an inch. That side of the board looks perfect all the way down. It's, it's uh, been planed all the way across. And the cup in it is gone, okay? There's no cupping in it. So that's how you get rid of the cup. And this is why, again, depending upon the wood, depending upon the planer, depending upon how well you've stacked it, this is why you want a full inch of wood to play with. Because we just made it with having that extra quarter of an inch to plane off to be able to get the cup out, the board relatively planed all the way down, and now we've got a nice board there. And like I say, this side here, with a you could sand this mark out of here. It's very small. It could be sanded out. So that's another good one by twelve. So guys, there's no secret to it, but there is a technique. And you have to be able to read the boards and understand what they're telling you. I've said those words before. No matter what project you're working on, I don't care whether it's wood, steel, concrete, I don't care what you're doing. You need to pay attention to detail. You need to ask yourself, why is it doing what it's doing? And then try and find out the answer. A lot of times people have the answers. Um, you know, there are people that have done it and they have the answer. But you don't know where they are, and a lot of them don't put videos on YouTube. I've seen a lot of videos of opinions on YouTube, but I don't see a lot of uh, videos about absolute facts. So, or at least as close to facts as we can get. Alright guys, so I'll show you one other thing here. This is a 1x10, and it's been planed. And you can see that it's pretty much reached all the way across except for right here, between my fingers, here and here, okay? But here's the thing with this board. Let me just uh, grab a hold of this. Um, this board has wane on it, okay? There's wane here, and there's wane on this side. Now here's the thing. When I was talking to you about cupping, I told you to cut the worst side of the board and continue, uh, you know, get a good face and then cut all your cuts off the worst side. Now, here's, here's what you want to do with this. Because you have a board that only needs a very little, a sixteenth or less will take this out. You can take a sixteenth off this top face, but you see how much Wayne the wane goes all the way into to within an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of the face of the board. So you really don't want to take a lot out of that face or you'll be down into the wane again. This this will hold up under, you know, certain conditions so that you still have a one by ten. So this side here is the side you should really be taking wood off of, off the wane side. So we have that little bit of... Um, edge that wasn't hit right here but like I say you could probably sand that off or whoever would use this so in this case I'm gonna leave the board as it is on this face which is 99 or more percent good and I'm gonna take everything off the other side so that I don't lose this thickness of board here to keep me with a 1 by 10 This will be the last thing on this uh, video then. I noticed the videos run pretty long already. So I'll just show you what it looks like when it's done.
Okay, so this board's down to three quarters. This is a good side here. Okay, nice looking board. The thing is, as you can see where the wane is, we still have at least three sixteenths or more left on that edge of that board. So, so um, that's why I planed everything off of this side. It's not really hard, like I said, guys. It's just you got to watch what you're doing. That's all. Just keep alert. Have a good one. And that's all I'm going to be videotaping today.